Hey there guys and welcome back to Dino Reacts. This week we are going to be looking at Friday the 13th part 2. So I'm going to give you my thoughts, my reactions on the movie, pretty much just go through what I liked about the movie and what I didn't like about it. So without further ado, let's get to it, let's review Friday the 13th part 2. <music> So guys, Friday 13th Part 2 was released in 1981 and was actually set five years after the original movie. So we start the movie, we're reintroduced to Alice, the final girl from the original, and we're just kind of catching up with her in her recovery after the events of the first movie. Now I do know the actress who played Alice in that first movie actually did agree to come back in a cameo role. She wanted to come back maybe in future installments, but I know at the time I think she actually had a stalker. So a stalker from the original movie. So she did agree to come back. What she didn't realize is she would be killed off in the opening scene. So I think from reports and kind of interviews I've seen over the years, she arrived on set. I think it was the last day of filming. Most of the crew were gone home. She didn't have the best experience making that movie. So when she got on set, they essentially told her that there was no script, that she'd pretty much have to just make up her own dialogue as she went. I think she talks to her mother on a phone call um, just, you know, about recovering from the events of the last movie. It goes from there to her going to a kitchen and actually getting killed by getting impaled by, I think it's, you know, like a screwdriver or a corkscrew, something like that. She does say at the time that when she filmed that scene, it didn't, the effect didn't actually work the way she wanted it to. So normally with those scenes, you know, a blade goes into the head and the blade retracts. With this movie, that didn't actually happen and she did get quite injured. So she didn't have the best experience with this movie Number one thing is she would return maybe for future installments and number two that there was no script that pretty much she got injured on set wasn't the best experience in the world. So guys from there we are introduced to the characters in this movie and for me they are very similar to the original cast from the first movie. So we have the typical you know stereotypical uh, we have the jock in there we have the smart girl we have you know the horny couple so there's all these kind of stereotypical characters again in here future installments will have the same thing but what i like about it, this movie is your final girl Ginny, is a lot more appealing than alice was in the first movie she also has a lot more empathy towards jason which i do think comes back to help her later on in the movie we do also have a little bit more diversity in these characters we have an asian character in the movie and there's also a character in a wheelchair which i thought was really good that they just added that in there you know it's not something that you'd see a lot in slasher films especially when there's a lot of running and screaming so the character of mark who's in a wheelchair he's kind of a jock type character as well which was great he is quite good in the movie he also is an absolutely brilliant kill that i'll get into later but for me the characters you know they're good characters they're not amazing characters the acting is quite a bit better than the first movie i will give it that and the final girl Ginny, is very very appealing this is also the first movie where we're really introduced to jason so jason is the prominent killer in this movie this is definitely his movie for me, it's not one of my favorite Jasons. It's, it's much different than other Jasons that come after it, to be honest. He tends to wear a sack in his head for all of this movie, so he doesn't really have the hockey mask until the next installment. So we get no hockey mask in this movie. As well as that, you know, he's a bit small, he's a bit grunty, he tends to run here and there. I didn't really like him. Even the sack on his head it reminded me a lot of the, the town that dreaded sundown. So I don't know, again, if they got inspiration from that movie. That's what I've always noticed with the Friday movies. They do tend to get inspiration from other movies and throw it into theirs. But for me, yeah, just to Jason in this movie, he's not great. He's a fun character. The kills are definitely okay in this movie. But for Jason himself, I'm just not a huge fan of that portrayal of him. As for the character of Ginny, so the final girl in this movie, I did really enjoy her. I thought she was very empathetic towards Jason, which did help her in the movie. Um, she was also just quite an interesting character. She was very likable. The minute you see her on screen, you do straight away like that character. Like the last movie, there is a bit in this movie where essentially, you know, two or three of the counselors leave the camp. So they leave so all the murders can be committed and they're away from everything. And obviously, you know, they return and see the bodies, which brings me to the kills in this movie. The reason the kills aren't too great is because of the last movie. So when the original came out, the, I think the MPA just missed a lot of stuff on it. So this one, unfortunately, gets really, really cut down when it comes to the kills. There's a lot of things censored. One kill in particular, which is probably one of the best kills in the franchise, and because it got cut, you know, a lot of people don't remember, which is unfortunate. Uh, it's two teenagers, they're, they're having sex in bed. Jason tends to come in and he impales both of them through the bed. So one on top of the other impaled in the bed. Now, 
in the movie itself it cuts away kind of during that shot you do see a little bit of blood but you don't see the act itself which again is it's very unfortunate i do know it was actually filmed but it's just never been released on blu-ray or dvd since Another great kill in this movie is the character of Mark. So the character I was on about earlier, who's in a wheelchair in the movie, the jock type character. He is a really nice character in the movie. He's not a bad character. So his death is very unfortunate. And it's a, it's a pretty sad death to be honest about it. But that is why we like Friday the 13th. We like seeing really cool kills. So for him, he kind of gets slashed or I suppose impaled right into the face with a machete. Then he slides backwards in the wheelchair and actually just literally slides down a load of steps. It is one of the best deaths in the movie for me. It's probably my favorite death in the movie. It would normally be, you know, the double impalement scene, but because of, you know, that getting kind of cut up by the MPA, I do prefer Mark's death where he slides down in the wheelchair with a machete in his face. Also, guys, the ending of this movie is a very strong ending in this franchise. So I really like the ending of the first movie, and I gotta say, I like this one a lot more. So with this ending we have Ginny who she pretty much finds Jason's shack so everyone that watches Friday 13 knows about Jason's shack at this point but she finds and she actually finds Pamela Voorhees the captive head inside kind of like a shrine Jason has to his mother. Now there is talk if you know if the head is actually controlling Jason or not but she does find and because as I said she's quite empathetic to Jason throughout the movie she understands you know he's just this little boy really that's been in the woods all his life looking for his mother so because she knows that she actually puts on Pamela Voorhees jumper and pretends to be Jason's mother and it does stun him for a while so he does get quite confused you know she tries to get him to drop his weapon she tries to get him to go down on his knees but when he sees his mother's captive head behind her it kind of shakes him out of it and he tries to kill her again. So the scene itself, it's a great scene and it's a nice way to kind of show that the final girl, yes, she can be resourceful and she can fight back, but she can also be quite smart. And it's a very smart thing to do with Jason. I know even in like, you know, the Friday 13th game, that's one of the ways you kill Jason in that game. So that has carried on for the franchise, you know, and everything, every kind of tie-in that they have for years to come. So it's a great little scene just to show her being quite smart, but also resourceful. So that ending of the movie I do really enjoy. Saying that though, I do have negatives with the ending as well. So they do kill Jason towards the end of the movie, but there's kind of an extra scene attached on where Jason you know, smashes through a window. It's meant to just be a scare scene like the last scene in the first movie and a lot more Friday the 13th movies in the future. Um, I didn't like it just because number one, Jason didn't even look like Jason you know he he had that kind of disfigured face but he had a load of hair down one side of his face at the same time which the next movie is completely gone as well as that though i'm not a big fan of those kind of last minute dream sequence scares and it does also bring into question i think it's paul the the kind of male lead in the movie whether he died or not so it's quite ambiguous ending it's quite a confusing ending and it's not one i liked i liked it up until that point but that that last little bit of it did sour it for me Another negative I'd have with the movie guys is it is one of the lowest kill counts for the, the franchise itself. So there's not a lot of kills in this movie. Um, now I don't know is that because of what happened with the first movie with the MPA or you know if they just didn't have a lot of characters to be killed off. A lot of Friday movies in the future tend to have a lot of secondary characters where the first two they just kind of focus on the counters. There is one secondary character he's a deputy who does get killed off. I thought that was a great way of you know taking the cops or the police out of the storyline that was quite good and also ralph from the first movie the kind of crazy guy who's warning everyone crystal lake he also gets killed off for me i wish he didn't um i just thought he was a cool little character to have around crystal lake that could have been in a couple more sequels but he does get killed off i think second in the movie so it's quite early i also didn't like that they did kind of just copy the storyline from that first movie. So it's the exact same setup, except this time instead of Mrs. Voorhees, we have Jason Voorhees. You know, we have counselors from the first movie, we have kind of counselors from the second in the second movie as well. So there's not much of a change up. Um, it is on Friday the 13th again, which I did like, because I know some installments aren't actually on Friday the 13th. Whereas this one, you know, it's set five years later, which made sense as well for the counselors to come back. But in saying all that, it is very, very similar. You know, Jason stalks someone, Jason kills someone. Um, there's not a lot of setup. Even like the characters who go to the bar, they're essentially going to a bar to get away from all the killing. So that when they return, the character of Ginny can discover all the bodies. So I just wish they had a little bit more creativity with it. But again, it's not a huge negative. It's just something I noticed when I was watching it. 
My last negative guys would be Jason himself. So as I said already, it's now one of my favorite Jason portrayals. He's kind of more like kind of a hermit kind of hick type character is what I've always seen him as. With the bag on his head, I also thought that wasn't the smartest choice. It was a bit lazy given that there was another horror movie similar to that that was quite famous with that bag on its head. So for me, they just kind of felt like they were copying it more than anything else. Again, not a huge, huge negative. It doesn't ruin the movie for me in any way. It's just looking at negatives, that would be it for me. So guys, they are just my thoughts on Friday the 13th Part 2. I did definitely enjoy this movie. As I said, you know, there are some faults. It's not the most original movie. It's not my favorite Jason. And I do just kind of wish they did a little bit more with the movie itself. The acting is quite good. Would I recommend you check it out? Yes, definitely. If you're a horror fan, you've probably seen it already. If not, you can check it out on DVD and Blu-ray. Next up, I'm going to be doing Friday the 13th Part 3, which has a 3D aspect to it, which I'm quite excited about. Again, I haven't seen that movie in quite some time, so I cannot wait to look at it. If you guys like this movie, let a comment below like the video and please subscribe if you can if you want me to review something else in the future let me know again in the comments and until next time guys hi ho